This screencast uh, covers the problem set for Module 4, Lesson 17, for the most part. But I do have one word problem from the homework where I'm going to give you some guidance and help you get through it because it's a little bit complicated. The first part of our assignment, we have some grids in which we want to model the multiply, multiplication of decimal fractions by decimal fractions. Okay, so we have this B four tenths times three tenths, and if we put that in decimal form, it would be, it would look like that, right? But we're going to work with a decimal to begin with. So I want to model four tenths on my grid here. So it doesn't matter really which order I have because of the commutative property. But I'm going to bracket four of these, so that's four tenths. And then we're going to shade four tenths. Next, we're going to go and use the horizontal lines. I'll model three tenths. We'll label that three tenths. And we'll now shade three tenths. The answer is modeled where we uh, have both colors or both directions of the shading. So I could actually count these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's work through the problem. So I have, again, 4 tenths times 3 tenths. And we say that's equal to 4 times 3 over 10 times 10. If I multiply 4 times 3, I get 12. 10 times 10 is 100. And I could give the decimal form of that, I could say 12 hundredths. So we're going to go back up to the top where we have 3 tenths times 4 tenths equals 12 tenths. Let's do another example with a mixed number. Okay, so we have 6 tenths times 1 and 7 tenths. We'll notice that 1 is in decimal form and the other is in fraction form, but that's not a problem. We know that 6 tenths is equal to 6 tenths, correct? Now, we have 1 and 7 tenths. How many tenths is that? Well, we know that that, if we change it to a fraction, is 17 tenths. Let's model this. Now, we see we have two uh, squares here, two rectangles in which to model this. We're going to have to use these two along this bottom part here to measure or to model 1 and 7 tenths. So let's take a look at this. We have 1 and 7 tenths or 17 tenths. I have to shade in one hole. And that's the one. Now I have to do 1 and 7 tenths. So I'm going to take my bracket and I'm going to show one and seven tenths, or I could say that's equal to seventeen tenths. I'm going to need to shade some more. Now we will use the horizontal portion to measure six tenths. So we'll have six tenths, and we'll shade that going the other direction using the other color. You may have the option of color at home or not. That's why we want to model this using the shading. And we continue on the second rectangle. Notice that these two rectangles aren't aligned, but the ones in your homework should be. Okay, so what do we have here? If we count all these, and I'm not going to, but we can look at this as 6 and times 10, so we have 60 there, and I have my 6 times 7 is a 42. Let's model this using our decimal numbers. So I have 6 tenths, or using our fractions, excuse me, times 17 tenths equals 6 times 17 
over 100. 6 times 17. We have 60 plus 42 is 102. One hundredths. Now we need to change that to a decimal. And we get 1 and 2 hundredths. So we can say that 6 tenths times 1 and 7 tenths equals 1 and 2 hundredths. We have some other problems that we have to do here, and there's a series of them. I'll, I'll start, I'll do one series completely, where we're going to convert these to decimal, uh, fractions, rather, and then find the decimal answer. So let's start with this. We have 6 times 3 tenths equals 6 times 3 over 10. Moving right along, 6 times 3 is 18 over 10. 18 tenths becomes 1 and 8 tenths. We'll write that answer in above. The next one is 6 tenths times 3 tenths equals 6 times 3 over 10 times 10. And we get 18 hundredths this time. And we'll represent as a decimal. 18 hundredths. And bring your answer up here. Finally, we have 6 hundredths. Write that as a decimal, or as a fraction, rather. Times 3 tenths. 6 hundredths times 3 tenths equals 6 times 3 over 100, or divided by 100, times 10. And we get 18 thousandths. And we write that as 18 thousandths. And rewrite that answer up here. Uh, we're going to start... I just, I'm going to do a couple here. So let's uh, look at this. The only difference here is I now have a decimal number that's greater than 1. So 1 and 2 tenths becomes 12 tenths. Times 4 equals 12 times 4 divided by 10 equals 48 divided by 10 equals 4 and 8 tenths. Or I could have also written that as a mixed number 4 and 8 tenths this way as well. I'll do just one more and we'll uh, try to keep this fairly short. So I have 1 and 2 tenths, so that's 12 tenths times 4 tenths equals 12 times 4 over or divided by 100 or 10 times 10 rather which becomes 48 hundredths and we'll change that to a decimal 48 hundredths we'll fill in those top ones and we follow the same procedure for the next one as well except this one here we're going to have not 12 tenths, but we're going to have 12 hundredths following the procedures we had in this slide and the previous one. Okay, this one is a little bit complicated. I'm going to use a tape diagram to illustrate things here. Uh, in some ways, the math is pretty straightforward, but we have to look at what the question is carefully. He says Cassius walked 8 tenths of a 3 and 6 tenths mile trail. How many miles did he have left to hike? Let's do the tape diagram. We're going to take the hole and label it 3 and 6 tenths. And we could also work with that as 36 tenths, correct? Now 6 tenths looks like this. So we're going to partition our tape diagram into 10 equal parts. And we're going to label 6 
six tenths is walked. And we have what's left. Note that the question asks how many miles were left to hike. So we're not going to look at the six tenths. We're going to look at this part of the diagram right here. And that tells us what to multiply our whole by, which is three and six tenths or thirty-six tenths. Let's look at the next one. We're going to refer back to that tape diagram. It says Cameron was one and three tenths miles ahead of Cassius. How many miles did Cameron hike already? Well, what we need to do here now is find out how far Cassius has walked. So we're going to have to work with another part of the tape diagram. So we're going to have to look at this part in the green. He has walked this far. So we're going to bring that information down here. So instead of multiplying my uh, 3 and 6 tenths times 4 tenths, we're going to have to do the 3 and 6 tenths by 6 tenths. We also have Cameron is ahead of Cassius. So let's uh, look at this. We're going to take whatever that distance is in the green. Okay, we don't know the answer to that, but we'll find out. So whatever that answer is to this portion of the problem, circled in green, we're then going to have to tack on what? 1.3. And then we're going to find the answer to that. And that's going to tell us how many miles Cameron hiked already.